Let's take a look under the hood within a quantum repeater. This is a simplified view of a quantum repeater, but it gives you a sense of what the design looks like. As you can see, there are multiple components here. To begin with, and to start with, I'll emphasize that there are multiple devices and components within a quantum repeater that make up the repeater itself. It's not a single monolithic device today, although in the future, we expect to see that. Today, they are individual discrete components that are brought together to form this quantum repeater. These include things like an entanglement source. Now, this entanglement source is what actually generates the entangled particles or photons, and these are then distributed to the connected points. Those connected points may be on either side of the repeater. They may be other repeaters, or they may be other endpoints or nodes. There are also photon sources and detectors within this repeater. These generate and receive photons on either side of the system within the system, within the repeater. There's also, of course, quantum memories, which are critical. And these quantum memories are what allow the repeater to store the actual qubits. And they enable things like better indistinguishability, which is really better fidelity, and better synchronization and timing of the incoming photons that can then be buffered within the memories. In other words, photons do not need to arrive all at the same time or in the same sequence. They can be distributed and realigned. There's also the Bell state measurement. This actually measures and characterizes the entanglement between two particles or two photons. This is incredibly important for performing entanglement and crucial for performing entanglement swapping, which we will talk about later. There's also quantum error correction. This is a unique capability that allows for errors to be mitigated within the repeater. And the idea here is that we can maintain longer coherence times. In other words, we can keep qubits longer in the repeater in the memories um, and correct the errors that may be occurred. Uh, as they're passed along. And these errors may happen over because of transmission lines and factors, environmental factors for those in those transmission lines, or they may even happen within the devices themselves. So quantum error correction is key within these quantum repeater designs. And then of course there's classical communication that occurs within the repeater itself. And this is where things like quantum operations are shared and exchanged. Uh, this is one of the ways that uh, air correction is facilitated, so the classical communication channels are another aspect to these quantum repeaters. As you can see though, the quantum memories are critical, and in this case, we have two, one for each side, one for each connection, if you will.